Welcome to Tech Throwback. In 1996, the government realized they had a bit of a problem. And that problem was simple. Everybody was trying to steal cell phone service. And it was incredibly easy to do. People were cloning cell phones and using those to rack up lots of airtime with other people's bills or on other people's bills. And that was costing the cell phone carriers tons of money. And the cell phone carriers didn't want to let it slide, so they went to bat for the consumer. And they did that by integrating pin codes that you would have to dial on your cell phone before it would dial out. You'd have to punch in a three or four digit code, and at that point, you would be able to make a call on your cell phone. And that, since the criminals didn't know your pin, even if they had cloned your phone, it protected them, and it protected the cell phone carrier. But in an emergency, you would have to type in that pin, or if you didn't have service, say in a non-service initialized device, you could not call 911. In an emergency where every second could mean the difference between life and death, you can understand why entering a pin code or having to stop to enter a credit card and register a cell phone to get some service on it probably isn't the best idea. So in 1996, the government decided it was time to do something about this. So what they did is they created a rule for non-serviced initialized devices or actually all devices that could connect to a cellular network they would be able to dial 911 without any delay, without entering a code, or without even needing service. So, NSI devices could suddenly connect to 911 in an emergency. And that has actually saved people's life. There are examples out there where people were able to dial 911 from a cell phone that was close by. It doesn't matter, the cell phone could have came out of a drawer, something left behind in a car, you would still be able to dial 911 if that cell phone was using current technology and it was in the vicinity of a network it could connect to. It didn't matter whether you paid your bill, whether you found it on the side of the road, whether somebody handed you the phone, you could still call 911. And it makes good sense. It's widely recommended by emergency preparedness experts to keep an old cell phone, one that you kept in the junk drawer, one that was in an old car, whatever it was, just keep an old cell phone that's charged or has a battery that you can charge it with around your house in case of emergency, you can dial 911. And the government wants to put a stop to that now. Why the change of heart? 1996, the FCC was implementing rules saying all carriers had to accept the calls. Well, it's become a problem. It's become a really big problem, actually. The problem has gotten so big that we have devices like this cell phone that can only call one number. That's right, the number is 911. It doesn't have a display, it doesn't do anything else. You can't even call it back. 911 can't even call you back. It's a cell phone that's built to call 911 and do nothing else. You'd have to call 911 back if you got disconnected and who knows where that call would end up on the next call. So before we jump into this, let's talk a little bit about how the government's trying to tackle that problem and what's going on today with your uh, ability to dial 911 from any phone. Most people do understand that those very old phones on the analog frequencies and stuff like that aren't gonna work. For the most part, they won't even turn on and most people aren't looking to use those in an emergency. But the ones in the junk drawers, those are the ones that have become a problem. 911 is getting so many calls that are having to be filtered out. I'd say the biggest problem is kids playing with their parents' old cell phones. Obviously, everybody knows that uh, you give your kids your old cell phone so they can play games on it or something like that. Well, those kids end up calling the one number that works. It's 911. And then 911 has to decide what was going on with the call and if they need to dispatch somebody to do a wellness check. Obviously, a big problem for them. It's taking time from emergencies that matter and devoting it to just nonsense. Pocket dials, kids playing with phones, like I said. So it's become a very big problem and it's such a big problem that the carriers want to block some of the problematic numbers. In 2008, the government helped them out with that. The FCC made a new rule requiring phones like this or phones provided by carriers to dial 911 in emergencies to have a special number. And that number is 12345678900. Pretty simple, right? It's just all the digits in order. And when 911 sees that pop up, they know that they won't be able to call you back. So you need to stay on the line or you'll have to call back and hope that you get directed back to the same public safety center. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense. You see that number pop up, you know what's going on. You know that it's somebody that doesn't have cell phone service and you won't be able to call back. But it does not solve the problem of fraudulent calls of which there are thousands and thousands and thousands of per year. In fact, there are some eight users across the United States, and just between that handful of users, they've called 911 more than a thousand times each in a year. That's 8,000 calls from eight people. You can see why this is still a problem. 
the carriers and those 911 centers need a way to block those numbers. So the FCC made a new rule. They amended the rule. So now if a phone like this or a carrier provided phone or somebody with no service calls in, the number is now 911 plus their ESN, their electronic serial number, if I remember right, or their IMEI. Uh, seven digits of that are amended to the number after 911. So now they can keep track of a phone that keeps calling 911 over and over. Very easy to see because their ESN or their IMEI is right there on screen. And hopefully they could go back, find out who originally had that phone registered, and maybe, maybe if it wasn't sold at a garage sale or passed down the line or was a burner phone in the first place, that could be traced back and they could go figure out who is making those calls and wasting time that should be dedicated to actual emergency responses. Up until 2013, everybody wanted to maintain the status quo. They wanted those 911 calls to be free, whether you had service or not, and if you could connect to a cell phone tower, you could call 911. It's become such a problem now that the government has changed their mind in 2015. And the FCC opened up a new request for comment asking everybody involved with the NSI exception to submit their comments on how much of a problem it's become and if they should keep the exception open. Now, I've never found any follow-up to that request for comment in 2015. It seems like they opened it up Everybody was okay with removing NSI exemptions, but the FCC didn't make a new rule. They just kind of left it there and said, we'll see if it becomes a worse problem. But out of the NSI exemption came this crazy cell phone. Companies had to capitalize on the opportunity to make a cell phone with none of the drawbacks of a cell phone, like service. So they jumped in and started making phones that only did one thing. That's right, call 911. So these don't seem to exist anywhere anymore. I have not found another one for sale today. At this point, I guess you'd go buy a track phone or something like that at Walmart if you needed an emergency only phone. But these, they don't seem to exist anywhere. So the government did kind of make a change when they started going after the NSI exemption. And I think the businesses making these saw the writing on the wall and ran. But we're gonna dig into this one today. It's a cool legal exploitation of a loophole and something you might not have seen before. I know I hadn't. So right on the box, we have the 911 Plus emergency cell phone. I don't know if the plus is part of it or not, but it seems like it might be. It says ready to use anytime, anywhere you are. Call 911 for free. Yeah, the government made that possible for you. Nationwide coverage with no roaming fees. Well, yeah, you don't need a plan. Why would there be roaming fees? No monthly bill. Yeah, we talked about that. No rate plans, no activation or contract. Well, I think that was all summed up in the first bullet point there. Call 911 free. You got it. Made in the USA with a flag on it. I, was this made in the USA? Ah, look at that right on the back. It says this product is assembled in the USA. You know consumer electronics aren't built in the USA for the most part. On the back, we have all of the same print from the front. This is a model 1101A. There was probably never a B. Let's be honest, Duracell inside, and why pay more when all you need is a phone for emergencies? Well, it was probably pretty cheap. I assume this was 30 to $50. I, I never found a record of what it used to cost, but it was probably very cheap. It doesn't even have a display. If you look right there, it looks like it should have a display, but it, it doesn't. It only has a dial pad and send and end buttons. So let's open this thing up and check out the emergency only phone. Kind of cool. It, opens right up. It's actually not a sealed blister pack. I guess in an emergency, you need to open it pretty quick. So we've got an instruction manual here. Let's take a quick look at that. Oh, it's map style. Fast start. It uses three Duracell double A's that are included. Well, they're not included in here. I don't know where they're at. Talk time. What is the talk time? I don't see it. Oh, talk time and standby times are approximate, but it doesn't say what they are. Interesting. Well, it does have an auto shutdown feature that turns the handset off if it's left idle for more than two minutes. That's pretty quick. And a low battery notification feature. If it's left on and battery strength becomes low, it will emit a beeping tone every 30 seconds. Press in to turn off the power and replace the batteries. Okay, it even has a making emergency 911 calls section here. Dial 911 and press send. Hmm, who would have known? And another one that says making other calls using enhanced calling you might be able to use. This is a third party network service and may not be available. A calling card, credit card, or collect or prepaid call may be able to be made from this handset. So no guarantees, it probably didn't work at all. 
but there's a chance you could have called a number other than 911 with this phone. Well, look at that. We actually have specifications for the phone. I didn't think they would be there at all, but uh, 832 channels, it can transmit on 824.04 to 848.97 megahertz. It receives on 869.0 to 893.97 megahertz. Channel spacing is 30 kilohertz, duplex spacing 45 megahertz. Frequency stability, okay, that's, we're getting really deep into radio specs on this phone. Most cell phones don't come with that many specifications here. They do list the radio power in here, which is pretty unique. It is 0.6 watts to 6.3 milliwatts. And it clearly runs on three double A's, so power supply is 3.3 to 4.5 VDC. And it should work in a whole lot of conditions. Negative 22 Fahrenheit, all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It weighs 5.3 ounces with batteries, or not a lot without batteries, and it even has a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Of course, the battery life wasn't listed anywhere in the manual. Let's see if we can fold this thing back up. It's map style, so that's usually a bit of a chore. Ah, we got it. All right, we'll put this up, and let's throw some batteries in this phone and power it up. Quick tour of the phone before we throw the batteries in it. We've got a status LED on top. It looks like it only flashes red or green, depending on status a kind of a cutout that makes it look like a display, I guess to make it easy for you to recognize how to use the phone. Speaker on top, microphone down here on the bottom, a normal alphanumeric keypad, send in buttons. Uh, I assume this is a volume rocker right here on the side and our headphone jack on the other side here. Now only phones that were designed to take advantage of the NSI exemption, just like this one, were required to have this sticker on the back. It was added as a modification to the rule in 2008 and this one has it. So it was built sometime after 2008, even though there is no year printed on anything I've seen here in the manual or in the book. So let's put some batteries in here and see what happens. Obviously we do not want to test this, test this. Hey, look at that, it's got an ESN. It says made in USA, even though we can see that it was only assembled in the USA. And it looks like it might work. Who knows if it'll call 911? I'm not gonna be the one to find out. I just wanna see if it powers on. At least they designed this phone to use standard AA batteries for power. In an emergency, you don't have to go hunting for a proprietary battery, a charger, something to plug that charger into. You probably don't have power anyway. Just knock the batteries out of your TV remote, put them in your phone, and you would have been good to go. Why does this have the Motorola turn on sound? We have a flashing red light and I think it should turn green if it has signal. This may have been from a 3G network and may actually never acquire a signal. So we'll find out and we'll see what happens here. It did mention in the manual, if the light is blinking red, there is no service and it won't be able to make a call. This thing's pretty long in the tooth. At this point, I don't know how old it is, like I said, but it's old and uh, it might not work at all these days. It's been almost a minute and it has not turned green yet and it's not looking very good because it usually doesn't take too long to acquire a network. I guess we'll give it a few more seconds here, see if it ever connects. Interesting. It just powered back off. It took so long to find service that it turned itself off. I guess it's never gonna connect. Well, unfortunately, this 911 emergency only cell phone is not going to be used for any emergencies anytime soon or, or ever again. But it was definitely a cool concept. Some companies decided they'd jump right in and take advantage of a rule designed to save lives and sell some stuff in the process. Well, the 911 emergency cell phone sure was an interesting idea. It's just not one that works today. With that said, you probably have a bunch of old cell phones laying around your house. If you haven't thrown them out or your kids are playing with them and any of those can probably still call 911 today. Just, if you can, watch them and don't let them call 911 because you're just putting a big strain on the system that will end up with the law being changed in the future. A lot of cell phone carriers will give you a phone with a number that can actually be called back in an emergency if you can prove the need is there. It'll probably be a lot newer than this one and it might save your life in an emergency, but it'll probably only call one number. At least you can get a call back on that number. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback. Don't forget to subscribe and I can't wait to see you on the next one.